Korea has always been a united uh, peninsula for for uh, for hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, it was first united under uh, I think uh, under the Koryo dynasty, and uh, there were actually we we there is a focus on three kingdoms: Koryo, Pekje, and Shilla. And these kingdoms fought with each other, and but ultimately the Shilla dynasty, with the help of the Chinese, unites all of Korea. And um, they were quite a strong uh, nation, uh, but they were later influenced by Confucian ideals and um, you know the ideas like respect for the elders, um, uh, things like that. Um, but so it's it's it was one united country, but as like the Kind of during the 1700s, 1800s, they had this anti-foreigner kind of policy where anybody that tried to, you know, mix, mingle with the Koreans, to to trade with them, to have intercultural exchange with them, all the Koreans were very, very protective of their own country and and nationality, and so they would always fight against and attack any kind of foreign. You know what they thought were intrusions. Um, so ultimately, what ends up happening is countries like Japan. Uh, you know, they went through this ma major process called the Meiji Restoration, where they modernized everything. Um, this is just my very limited understanding of history. That, I mean, all the historians out there will be laughing at what I'm saying, but <laughs> but uh, but the Meiji Restoration uh, developed helped to develop Japan by absorbing all these different ideas from the West and basically helping them become a very modern and strong country. Meanwhile, Korea, they did try to modernize, uh, but it was by the time they tried to modernize, it was too late. And the trend at the time was every country, there was no place in the world that wasn't conquered by an empire. I mean, there are very few places that were not conquered by empires. And so Japan, becoming the modernized country that they wanted to be, they became an empire too. And so, you know, they went out, conquered, Korea, China, they defeated the Chinese and defeated even the Russians later on. Um, they conquered lots of Southeast Asia as well, and they had this big plans for being an empire, um, which is only resolved by World War II, as you know, and, and, and uh, the American invasion of Japan. Um, so Korea became a colony under Japan. Um, uh, and under under so now the Koreans have a very uh, um, negative view of the Japanese because of the way uh, Koreans we were treated by the Japanese during the 30 years or so that we were under colonial rule. And there's a lot of bitter feelings, especially in the older generations, about that. Um, the newer generations are, are less, um, I guess, uh, biased by all the suffering that they received and so they try to see well at least i try to see things more as what happened uh what were the trends during the time of course there were suffering going on on um but that's what happens when there's war um yeah so north korea and south korea they uh they it, what happens is there's a group of uh, freedom fighters uh by led by kim il-sung uh, Kim Il-sung is the founder of North Korea, by the way. Um, he's He fights against the Japanese, but kind of retreats into Russia when it looks like they can't fight for their freedom any longer because the Japanese are too strong. And when finally the Japanese get defeated, Kim Il-sung, who was influenced by Marxist ideas, communist ideas of equality for all, freedom, um, he comes down, uh, occupies North Korea with the Russians, so the Russians place him in power. Um, the United States puts... Um, Syngman Rhee under power in South Korea and uh, so there's this kind of Cold War conflict going on as well. Um, you'd have to read like scholarly, more scholarly papers to do to to to, to understand this deeper but uh, but yeah so basically North Korea becomes you know under Russian influence, South Korea becomes under uh, American influence but at the same time there's that um, Korean, North Korean, South Korean conflict going on that kind of is, uh, that goes deeper than just the big Cold War uh, co conflict. And so, the thing about South Korea though that I, that I um, really admire is that they've developed so much in such a short period of time. Um, in the 50s, that, so 53 is when the war ended, 
that was when North Korea was richer than South Korea. South Korea was dirt poor. I mean, it was poorer than country like Africa. Um, but the Korean people, they, they worked really hard. There were lots of struggle for, uh, free, for human rights, for democracy, because at that time the, there were lots of dictators who, who held all the power and tried to, uh, they, you know, they were power mongers, but, um, they did help the economy a lot, um, uh, but you know, over over a period of like fifty years or so, South Korea just blossomed into a, f a more legitimate democracy. It's still getting there. It's still working towards it, but you know, it, it's come a, f a far away from what it was in the past. And it's now a very modern. It's very wealthy. Um, I think it's like the 13th largest economy in the world now. I don't know how it is now, but it has been for some time. Um, and it's also a very, a much more legitimate democracy where the votes actually matter um, in, in, in the outcome uh, of the president. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, there's now there's lots of Korean dramas. I don't know if you know anything about K-pop. Korean dramas, uh, but lots of Korean culture kind of being, um, I guess, spread throughout the world. Lots of Korean food. People are knowing, learn, learning more about Korean food, Korean culture, and just being more interested in Korea. So, yeah, Korea's come a long way in, in, in their progress. So, yeah, I'm very proud of that. <laughs>